So before going further, I think I'll request Kuldeep to uh, take this opportunity to take further. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So a very good morning, and I hope you had a nice weekend. I will just keep my screen and maybe turn off video just for a better bandwidth. Like that will help me. Yeah. So just to start, like, um, so I'm Kuldeep Kumar. Currently, I'm doing a postdoc at St. Justine Research Center in Montreal. I did my PhD, which was in computer science and neuroscience uh, from ETS with, in University of Quebec in Montreal. Prior to that, like I had my bachelor's and master's from IIT Kharagpur, and I was working as a scientist in Indian Space Research Organization, where I was able to also work on like Mars Orbiter mission. Like we had like three payloads, and that was a nice mission from India. So other two instructors, like with me, would be Praveen. So he is also a researcher at University of Quebec. He did his master's from IIT Guwahati, and he was a senior software engineer at Samsung Research and Naresh, so he did his master's from Indian Institute of Science in uh, Bangalore, and he was lead Samsung research uh, at India, and also right now he is like senior tech lead at BMW Germany. We also have like a parallel course which is going on, so like we are the three instructors which will uh, be taking care of. So the overall goal here is to give you a brief idea like what, what would be the motivations and all, and then to provide uh, like what you are going to learn in this and along with that a detailed course description like what is and how this is going to be slightly different from other online courses or like what we have to offer to you. So I will just start with a basic uh, like introduction. So for example, so what is different for machine learning compared to traditional programming? So what used to happen like in giving a very broad overview. So in case of a traditional programming, you will have data and you will. So and then you feed it uh, as well as you write your program and you will get an output. So, for example, if I'm going to ask uh, you like, have you played chess like any one of you? Have you played chess? Um, Okay, so it's like if I am to ask you to write a program for say chess, what you will do is like you will figure out some set of rules and then you will try to like, okay, you have to follow these rules and you will write some heuristics if I start with this and that. So there would be like a lot of permutations and combinations. So that can work like if you have like two or three choices. For example, you go for a shopping, okay, I have to buy a chess board there it's fine like okay there are three options i can decide like what but when there are like the permutations they go on and the complexity increases then it becomes intra intraceable like and the computational power is increasing so there comes like machine learning where the goal shifts from like instead of like re relying more on heuristics what we rely is like we rely on the data more so here the story is like you feed the data as well as a set of labels or the outputs to the computer and what it will try to give you is like a program. So what it means is like based on the data it's going to learn like what should be the output. To give you an example again on the chess so have you heard about the alpha uh, go uh, and alpha zero like any one of you. So, okay, so this is like uh, essentially uh, in 1997, the Deep Blue, which was like a supercomputer. So this is like a brief story kind of thing. So in 1997, there was like, uh, there was a competition between Gary Castro. He's like a champion in chess, world champion in chess and the Deep Blue, which was like a supercomputer from IBM. So in the six games, he was beaten, but that program was more like you know the what are the possible permutations and combinations so recently like over the last couple of years like the google's deep mind they have developed some programs including for example the alpha for example the alpha uh, zero so here what they do is like they feed lot of simulations of the chess program and 
the program itself learns the strategy so what the difference arises is like some of the paths or some of the strategies which we as a human are not able to think those would also be figured out by this and it took like just four hours to learn so this is just to highlight you like what is the difference between a traditional programming and machine learning it's just like we shift from more like heuristic based approach to more like a data driven approach we let the data do the talking so now i will like give you a brief overview like how this has come over so have you heard about the turing award of 2019 so i guess like you might follow on that so the three of the pioneers in deep learning for example uh, like uh, yoshia benjo Geoffrey Hinton and Yann LeCun. They got the 2019 Turing Award, which is like a Nobel Prize equivalent uh, in computer science. So this is like a brief history of the AI. So it started in like 1956 when there was like a workshop in Dartmouth College in USA, where a set of researchers, they get together and they officially started artificial intelligence as a research in academic domain so then there was like a inspiration like the perceptron was introduced in 1958 which takes motivation from how our brain works so what it tries to do is like the perceptron it tries to mimic how a neuron is processing the information so which is like a building block of our brain so this is like a motivation for the ai is like how we as a human we work or we process information for example, even now when I'm speaking to you, so I am like formulating my sentences. I'm trying to like, okay, whom I am interacting with, what is the topic, what I have to convey and all. So I'm processing a lot of inputs, which are which, which could be sensory and all, and then I'm giving output. And you are like, when you are listening to me, so your brain is processing, okay, what is being told? What are the words and all that? So this is like the basis of like, or the basic motivation towards most of the AI is like driven by the human brain. There have been like a lot of advances in between, like for example, the perceptron was there, but in between there were like computational challenges. We didn't have like uh, hardware or the computers which could solve all those uh, programs. So what, so what uh, then it led to an AI winter. So there was no funding uh, like available for like a long period of time. But then around 2000, then there was like with the development of the new hardware and like different lot of data sets, for example, from Google or like Flickr, Facebook and all those things, then there has been a burst. So this is like a rough timeline. It started with like a lot and lot of um, uh, hard work from many of the researchers and the recent thing is like it is highlighted by the Turing Award which was given to three of the pioneers of AI. So next is like the question which will come to us is like so we hear a lot about these words like okay so what is deep learning there is machine learning and then there is artificial intelligence so it's always like thrown like one word and now another word so nowadays mostly like even for deep learning people they try to use like okay it's artificial intelligence also so just to uh, like give a broad idea about this terminology so artificial intelligence the goal is like any machine which can perform like an intelligent task it can be our calculator it can be a simple robot or it can be like a, a simple uh, like answering machine so this is like a broader umbrella. So under this like comes a specific set of like machine learning. So which are like set of algorithms where the goal is to represent the data and extract information from that which could be relevant. So there are different kind of models which are there. And within this like there is a subset which is like a deep learning way which are kind of like a set of models like convolutional neural networks or like Turing machine and LSTM and different models which have been developed over the past year. So this is a broader picture. Now the thing which comes out is like, so what is the motivation like? What is the, what are the applications of machine learning? Why there is so much hype which is going on? 
So I will ask, uh, like, do you have like an email account? So everyone has like multiple email accounts, I guess so. So for example, there, like with a rough estimate, there are more than 5 billion email accounts are there. And so as such, like the number of emails which are being sent day in, day out as in the scale of billions. Now imagine like you are working and or if a person he's get, going to get an email from a prince in Nigeria who is like going to send me the gold. So we know this, okay, there is no prince in Nigeria who is going to send me gold. So we know that this is a spam. But imagine like you are going to get something from Canada Revenue Agency like a phishing site. So you can either lose your sensitive information or you can lose like uh, some part of uh, like for example, some people who get scammed and they lose a lot of money. So this is a very important thing for many of the organizations to detect such kind of emails which are called spam from the regular emails. So what was the what what is the basic way you what would be the basic intuition you will have to like detect a spam? So if I can ask anyone of you. So, anyone? Harish? So, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it could be so like yeah. that. Yeah, go uh, ahead. For a spam, like, so as you mentioned, some, some phishing emails. So that could be uh, like grab our information, right? To get our information. Yes. Um, but maybe like, so based on the keywords in the subject or in the, uh, or in the content of the email, so based on that, I believe that so they're gonna do uh, so they're gonna filter all our emails. So based on the keywords, so if they find the keyword, so they're gonna put uh, the emails into the spam folder. Yeah. Is that? Uh, yeah, yeah, perfectly. So that's like one of the things. So here, what what we are employing is like our knowledge. Like, okay, if there is a prince from Nigeria, I know for sure. Like, he's not going to be like uh, true or like if the subject is something like okay I'm going to send you gold or like the contents are like that then we know that this is a phishing so what we are employing here is like our knowledge but imagine like you have to do it like for a billions of emails so then you cannot just rely on the knowledge and all so what what usually they try to uh, the approach for this is like we think of it as like a data driven approach we will take a lot of spams and then based on the information and content from the sender the IP address all this information so that's kind of like fed into a model and that tries to determine which email is spam or not but the objective like when the advantage of machine learning here is like it is able to generalize so it not only learns on the data on which you are going to feed but what it will try to do is also it will try to learn a model so that when the new data is also coming, it will be performing robustly. Whereas like if we just employ our knowledge, okay, this is a prince from Nigeria, then that would be restricted to those kind of scenarios. So this is like one of the cases. Another example is like, for example, if I'm going to search on Google, if I'm going to search, so what do you want? Like, what would be your preference? You would want like, what, is most likely link you want to click. If you are going to search for the weather outside, you don't want to get an information about weather in Toronto. You want, if you're searching for weather in Montreal, you want to get information specific to that, or like if there are warnings specific to that. So this is like essentially ranking the output of the web pages based on what you want. Another example of this is essentially if you are want to do a shopping, like if you are doing e-commerce, I, I guess like most of you have used like shopping pages and all, and then you get thrown a lot of advertisements. So have you had like any recent transactions or in, interactions on online shopping platform? So. So yeah, Kumar, like, uh, so for example, when I search in a Google for some product, uh so it's going to appear on on my amazon account so so is this something related to this right i, I yeah. think okay uh, yeah nice okay so 
for example like in this so what happens is like imagine you are you want to book a flight and you make a search on your google page about the flight then even if you go to a weather page you will be seeing that there are like uh, pop-ups which are like based on your flight which is which are going to come over there so this is essentially like ranking the page based on your search as well as like content placement like advertise advertisement and all so it is customized to a particular user so if i'm going to ask you as a friend like okay what you want to do so i know your preferences and i can suggest you based on that but if the google or like for example facebook or any general in, uh, search engine or a site it has to suggest so it has to customize or tailor made to specific people so this is another thing like where the content base or uh, the web page ranking and the content or the advertisements are like important so this is like another example uh, where machine learning is useful so for the third one for example this one so have you heard about the uh, autonomous driving like or tesla like anyone of you like for example So, uh, for example, so what and this is like an, a very good example of um, application of machine learning. So when we are going driving a car, so we are taking the information from the environment, like okay, what is the light, color of the light? Should I go or should I not? What is the speed limit? What are the things which we should? Which side of the road I should drive if there is a passenger which is coming? So this is essentially like processing a lot of information. So now, uh, for example, for autonomous driving, so these informations, these are fed into or captured using cameras. And then based on that, instantaneous decisions are taken, which, which can lead to driving. So this is going to like leading to self-driving cars and also like, for example, BMW and they have long, they are exploring So yeah, can I like, okay, I got like a question. Yeah, so uh, just a minute, like I uh, had like a question maybe in terms of the chat, nope. Like search for Apple in Google search engine, you can get Apple products. So this is like from selling, I, Aravin, so this is like like search for Apple in Google search engine. You can get Apple products rather than the fruit apple. This is based on ranking, right? Yeah, exactly. So if you are going to search like, so imagine first time if you search like apple or fruits and you go on customizing that, then the higher chances would be to get the apple fruit. But most of the people, I don't think they are going to search for apple fruit. So when you search for the apple products, they get customized. So even the advertisement which will pop out on another pages they would be like specific to the apple products like that so now coming back to the self driving car so in this case like what what is happening is like you have to pro take a lot of information process it and take an instantaneous decision so if we as a human do it because we have our brain which is like processing all this information but for a self driving car or for example a self driving truck this would have like this requires like a lot of processing power and all and this is where machine learning comes into picture if we try to write a rule we may miss one thing or another okay the driving speed may be missed or like we, it, if the road condition is going to change we may miss it but if we try to feed it like based on the data then they are going to perform better so this is like an image of uh, the darpa challenge which is like uh, the um, uh, defense department of us like they have been organizing a challenge since 2000 uh, early 2000s and they they this has led to a very uh, nice uh, developments like which is like an example is the tesla like the recent products from tesla or like the self driving trucks from bmw and all so these are the few examples where like a traditional like pro approach or uh, would not fare that well whereas like if we are employing a machine learning approach that is going to work better there are multiple examples also so for example alexa if you are using siri or like google home or any of these products or if like for example you are like in a financial company and you want to know like 
which people you want to send a specific credit card offer. So you don't want to send it to everyone. You want to send it to the people based on their incomes. Okay, the, the, this particular credit card would be suited to them. And so these are the tailored things. Similarly, for example, in e-commerce, you have a lot of transactions which are going on. So you want to detect whether there is a transaction which is fraud or it, it is it genuine so that you can like keep the safe security as well as like of the e-commerce uh, platform. So this is like uh, to give uh, like some of the aspects which are like why machine learning is like uh, getting popular and like it, it is going on now. So then the next thing is like why machine learning now. So this is like so there recently there has been a report like if you uh, like by McKinsey. So which is like a consulting firm. So they they did an analysis on the potential of AI and what are going to be its impact. So it is going to impact many diverse fields, but the estimated like overall contribution to GDP is estimated to be like 13 trillion dollars by 2030, which is like a huge amount like of the world GDP. So the question then arises is like, why now? So I'm, I'm going to ask um, uh, like, for example, Aravind, so you use Facebook, right? Hello. Hi, Aravind. So, so we use like, uh, for example, Facebook or like YouTube. We watch like every day. So when we upload like anything on Facebook or when we click any on anything on Facebook, so what it does is like it creates a data point. Like we are telling the Facebook, okay, this is my preference. This is the type of things we like. So these are like data points. Now there are like billions of interactions happening like that every day similarly on youtube like there are 100 hours of video being uploaded every minute if a single person he starts watching a youtube video or today he cannot finish all the youtube videos in his lifetime so there there is like huge amount of data which is getting generated so this is like the one pillar of this thing which is like big data availability so we have like a lot of data to learn from then the second thing is like at, uh, the computational power. The second uh, pillar is the computational power. So we used to have like the CPUs, which were like the brain, the, computa uh, the computational power used to be more driven by that. But now we are also getting like the powerful graphical processing units. So the slight difference is essentially a graphical processing unit has like, it's a specific type of microprocessor which can deal with like a large parallel task, but uh, can only focus on one task at a time. What it does is like Im imagine you want to do one specific task. So then it will give you a power to do it like 10 times or even 50 or 100 times faster than with the CPU. So these things, they allow us to deal with the big data, which is there. Then the third thing or the third pillar is like the new machine learning techniques which are coming up. So every day, like either we hear like there are neural networks like AlphaGo is being developed or like we are beating, we are developing new methods which can like play better chess or like a, a player in Go. Or even like if you follow the news, like recently there was like on the black hole uh, image which was reconstructed. So we had like huge amounts of petabytes of data and then to learn the prior, the machine learning algorithm was used. So it was, uh, and based on that, then the final black hole image, which was being constructed. So these are just to give you an idea, like what are the three pillars which is driving right now? So some of the aspects were there before, like for example, some of the concepts in terms of machine learning techniques, they started in 1950s, but then the two other pillars were not there. But right now is a time when we have like all the three pillars, like there is big data, which is available. There is like the computational power, which is available. And then we have like the new machine learning techniques, which can infer, like which can take this data as an input or, with, or a simplified term, which can feed on this data. So just to give an example, like if you have like an image, like in, imagine you take a photo and you want to process it to name it, like, okay, what is going to be there and all. So it's going to take around four, uh, like 250 seconds on CPU, but 
with the GPU, it's going to be like around like 10, one tenth of the timing. So these are the advances which we are getting. To give you a better idea, for example, so there is like an ImageNet challenge which is there. So what is ImageNet challenge is like, we want to recognize images or we want to classify them into say 100, 100 1000 categories. So this is like, uh, for example, I will give you an example of a baby or like a kid. When we teach a kid, like, okay, this is a cat or this is a dog, we give one or two examples and after that a baby can recognize this is a cat or this is a dog. This is how like uh, we learn, how, how our brain is learning. But for the computer, we need to feed it like a lot of samples. So for this, like the ImageNet challenge was created where 1.2 million training images, they were taken from Flickr, which was like an online platform for images and all. And they were annotated to 1000 categories. So like what it is there, like there is a bird, there is a frog. So this challenge was going on from 2010 and all. So in 2012, there was like a sudden jump, like from 20, at the error rate, like it was like 26%. To, it jumped to 16% because that was a time when Google's uh, like um, Google Net was used. So this is like a deep learning architecture. And recently, like in 2017, we got an error rate of 3%, which is which it means like if I'm going to if the machine is going to uh, classify the images like okay it's a bird or a frog it's all it's only going to like get a three percent error rate whereas in 97 cases it's going to be perfectly fine and this is better than the human error rate we have like a 95 percent accuracy when we are doing this so it means like is it over no there are like multiple things are still there so for example like what we want to do is like we want to understand the whole image like what is the background what is there so as a kid, like he understands the context also, like as some, a kid without teaching, like if he's going to fall down from one place, he's not going to climb that same place second time. He understands that context and all. So this is called scene understanding, which is still going on. So this is just to give an example of like, what is the potential of ML? So now to come to a point like which is like more useful to you and me like why why we should learn like machine learning right now so if we go to any of the job postings so we are going to see like there are machine learning job postings data scientists and like uh, ai and then there is like 50 percent expected job growth which is going to be there and the average salary is like at least hundred thousand and plus even like in, in Canada, so this is like the estimates uh, of machine learning jobs in Ontario and overall Canada, it's going to be like huge. And for example, Montreal itself, like to give you an example, Montreal and Toronto, they are going to be the hubs for these things. So this is like an opportunity, like the optimal time where the resources are there, where the demand is there, so what, what is there is lacking is like the skill, which is like, that's why we try to focus on the skill, like what is required to, for this. So now to give you an idea, like, so um, for this particular course, what we are going to cover, like this is like a big picture. So the focus would be like, uh, we will try to cover the fundamental concepts of machine learning but our primary focus would be on hands-on experiences. So what we will try to do is like, we will have a lecture usually, then the next class would be a tutorial and then we will give you a small data set to try it hands-on. So the primary focus is like to introduce you to the concepts and as well as like focus more on the hands-on. So for this, like we will be using Python primarily and then we will also like try to do uh, the goal. Uh, the other major goal would be a real time project. So we will towards the end, like we will go for a real time project. So for this, like either you can look into some Kaggle challenges, which are there. Imagine you have to predict the property prices in certain area. So that's like one of the projects which is there. Or if you have to like estimate, like in terms of the insurance. So these are like the uh, in terms of the business or the topics which are coming nowadays. So this is like a broader picture. So if you have any questions like you, we can, uh, you can ask me or like later on. 
I can also give like so to give you a broader like a more detailed idea of like what the course is going to cover. So we, we are going to give you an overall introduction of like what are the different types of learning or uh, like approaches are there. Then within this, like what are the classification techniques, each one of them. So for example, we will cover support vector machine, random forest. And for each one of them, we will have like a concepts class. Then we will have a hands-on tutorial. And then we will give you like a small data set to try that on your own so that you gain expertise. And in between, we will have quizzes so that we can like get hold like, okay, if you are learning or not. So next we will also cover like the regression techniques, the clustering when which is unsupervised and also like some deep learning techniques with application uh, to deep learning. So this will also like uh, what uh, the base, the, it, the, it, this will also require some like concepts from linear algebra like maths and all calculus. So we will have like a, we will, have like some of the basic uh, courses on like uh, on this like prerequisite courses so we will try to cover these basic concepts and then the key thing will also be like to focus on data like if you get a raw data how you are going to process it how you are going to feature engineer like what features you need to use and what are the basic approaches you can apply so the uh, so this will also lead you to like hands-on experience on various libraries from Python, including NumPy, Scuppy, and Sklearn, Pandas, and Matplotlib, as well as like a real-time project. Uh, Kumar, I have a question here. Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. So, for example, like if if I'm like a beginner to the Python, or or actually like if I don't have the programming knowledge, so how difficult is to uh, is to get into the machine learning? So like uh, if you have like basic uh, programming only, like if you can know like, okay, what if you can type and have basic uh, information on that, then it can be started. Like the Python is very easy. So the hands-on tutorials, which we will be doing, we will start with like how to install some of the libraries, how to use them. And we will also give some use cases. So that will develop like this is like the Python hands-on. So you will also develop like the expertise on Python and how to use these libraries. Oh, okay. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, cool. Thank you. So for the next, like we what we plan to start with is like in terms of the supervised learning, we will start with the background, motivation, what are the real-time applications, definition, and list of algorithms. So this is just like a overall idea. And so if you have any questions, uh, please, uh, please. I think you can unmute uh, Sian, Selender, Arvind. You can speak out. Uh, just a question about jobs. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, Kardeep, um, like, uh, like, do you have any like idea like uh, what's out there? Like, I haven't researched uh, what postings out there, but. Um, I think we most of us are in uh, you know, software development, uh, quality assurance. Uh, so, do you do you have any kind of uh, uh, QA uh, jobs on the uh, ML? So, uh, actually, like uh, for for example, now there are like uh, potential. If you want to, like, I mean, my my personal suggestion would be like one thing is like your interest also like. But one of the things is like banking sector or like the finance, which is there. So if you uh, develop the expertise on these tools, like if you are uh, able to take like a lot of data and uh, work with the Python libraries and all. So one of the simple things or like one of the good things would be like to enter a finance sector and where the salaries are also very high. So that's one of the things. Also, like I would, I think like uh, Gandhi Appara, like he can suggest to you all on that because he has done like a nice case study on that. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think, uh, see, so yeah, and uh, you know, not even uh, QA, I mean, testing or developing side. Uh, recent times, uh, we have been like uh, communicated with some of the company's uh, chief operating offices, even in uh, software gaming or financing. And we have communicated with the BMO and uh, Bell people because uh, the testing, I, I don't know your background, maybe if you are in testing or in developing side, uh, down the line, the people are going to be uh, 
like uh, the takeoff from these you know manual people especially even in testing also you can use with python right so why do we right. more emphasize on python uh, with machine learning or data science uh, we could do with different languages either with r we can do python we can do and we can use sas as well but uh, among them 70 to 80 percent of industry is handling with python right. uh, in the last week yeah in the, even in the last week we met uh, Ludia, chief CVO, CVO, like uh, he's he's actually uh, imported from uh, France. Uh, like uh, he explained that you know, uh, they right now there is there is the people are not available in any sector, and the people out there they are paying like a lot more than we expected, especially in this. Okay, so the background even you know uh, one of our past students he his background is uh, pharmaceuticals. But now he is working as a data scientist after after this. So, okay. so irrespective of your background, irrespective of your experience with uh, machine learning or data science or AI. So actually everything is same, either data science, AI or machine learning. The people, they are not educated or they, probably they don't have knowledge on that. So they just simply call it as machine learning. Even right. the data, because you know, if you see as Kuldeep uh, stated that, we are dealing with the data, right? Like uh, data processing, feature engineering, all this stuff. It's all in the one umbrella called like uh, AI. Right. So even data science, machine learning, deep learning, reinforcement learning. So there are different terminologies, but all are under the same umbrella called AI. So right. our, our intention is like, you know, uh, because we do have the people work for, as a senior tech leads since last 10 years. We are trying to make them like a small community of people. We are trying to help them to uh, develop because down the line, we have people from University of San Diego and Stanford universities. They are researchers among on one of our colleagues. So our intention is to uh, make the people understand and easy to easily applicable into the industrial uh, prospects. Even if you take any sector, transportation sector, logistics test sector, even transportation means like Bombardier, or uh, Canadian National Railways, or CP, all this stuff, you know, these are transport. So huge amount of data is available, huge, it's really huge. So the people don't know uh, how to, even just a basic example, you know, every day you are traveling from A to B, I mean like uh, uh, from, from A to B orig origin to destination. So see, every day you are following the same path or same lane. So you might understand, okay, there is a signal, there is a stop sign, right? So you are feeding data into your, into your mind. But one day there is a traffic, there is no signal in your phone, but you can take the decision, right, based on that. So that's what is happening in the data. So the data is available in any, every sector, but the people don't know how to use the data. Even in a QA part here, uh, in machine learning also, we directly don't say like a quality analysis, but th th there is, a, there is a, a component called data processing data pre-processing so that data pre-processing usually do quality analysis whether the data we usually maybe the next class called we will be explained you but there are two parts one is training data the other one is testing data so they do testing and they do once again like uh, evaluating the particular data whether the data is okay or not but here right. we don't go like the conventional testing techniques like a hplm or i don't know there no. are different techniques av available right but here, we, our approach is different. We do test the data. We do see quality analysis here, but the dif different approach here. So, uh, and coming back to the, uh, uh, what we call the, the job prospects. If you see, if you just uh, type like uh, data science jobs in Canada or Montreal or data machine learning jobs, you'll be plenty of jobs available uh, around us, right? But uh, we don't have proper guidance, especially that's where actually the lacking out there so that's where our intention also even that's even the, now that yeah yeah that's it one, one more to add uh, gandhi uh, is um do we need any certification at the end like to get into the job market in this area uh, not exactly the people out there because we do have consulting firm uh, so that's where that's why you know i'm i'm more confident to state that uh, the people people out there they they're trying to a showcase their skills not with because you know even even learn if also provide certification at the end of the course after submitting the after submitting the live project 
but the, the people the pre-request you know if you see job descriptions and all the people at the end of the day they test your skill set are you really understanding the data are you really know how to use the libraries because mm -hmm. in this uh, there is not big uh, challenge with uh, uh, with programming uh, here programming is very minimal we could say like uh, 20 25 percent but the rest of the things, the level of understanding on data, especially, you know, the domain knowledge. Do you okay. mind uh, which organization you are working? Uh, I'm working for CN, but I also have a big data background in Hadoop. Yeah, okay, that's great then. So, so CN, imagine. So, if you know that uh, the, dom uh, the domain knowledge, okay, so you know already about CN uh, applications, right? So that means you know the idea about the your domain, then it's very easy to understand the model. Okay, if you know the what kind of model is directly related to your, your domain, then it's that's it. There's not a big deal on that. Just only thing is we should know the domain and we should know the what kind of uh, algorithms is applicable to the particular model. That's it. Okay, great. Thanks for the yeah. insight. Sorry. Uh, thanks, yeah. thank, thanks so much, I mean, for the insight. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Are there any questions? Hello, Arvind. Arvind, you there? Uh, Gandhi, sorry, uh, sorry. I, another question. I just thinking about. Uh, yeah. So, um, so this is um, how long the the courses will be? Um, like uh, how many weeks uh, we are or months that we are looking at? Oh, uh, actually, we have planned like for weekends because uh, most of even the parallel courses are going on. Most of the people are working people, right? So right. only uh, Saturday, Sundays, uh, the classes are being uh, held. So okay. it's it's like uh, it depends upon the, the the student also. If the student like really uh, pick it up, you know, the, uh, right. the topic, then we can we can wind up within three months. Oh, uh, that's okay. uh, two yeah, hours. Because, yeah, because you know the, our intention is to the, the candidate has to be understand the uh, our program, uh, our, you know the, the subject. Exactly. Right. So because uh, every class, I mean every next class, there is a quiz, a, a five to ten questions. It's everything right. is online. So right. then after there is a demo on the model with Python because and there are there are some classes. I tell you, two to two to four classes only with Python. So handling with Python, using the different libraries, and you know, in derivative different programmings on that Python especially. So uh, out of that, uh, it will it will be wind up within three months. Three months is calculated as a weekend, it's not like the total. So like a, because uh, yeah, probably we, like two, uh, one, one, one hour. Okay. Yeah, yeah, one hour. Yeah, one hour is lecture, and one hour is on uh, on the model. I mean Python application. Uh -huh. So, okay. because if you don't understand or if you skip the class, we can join in another batch, you know. So, there is a parallel batch. So, you can okay. join there and you can catch up the class and you can come back here. And awesome. we do provide like uh, the recorded lectures. Okay. And uh, yeah, so the, the recorded lectures and the presentations will be shared with, uh, with the candidates. Right. So, and you will be added to the group uh, with the instructors. Uh, so, and there is any changes and there is... Uh, any updates available and because you know our intention is to make you guys to be uh, involved in one of the Kaggle competitions or something so those are the showcases if you are able to uh, if you are able to uh, finish like uh, any uh, Kaggle competition or somewhere that there so that's very easy to showcase your profile into the companies right exactly yeah yeah and so, then also so is, is it the only course you're offering or you have any other courses uh, in your so we have like uh, uh, mathematics and artificial intelligence. Okay. So that, the, uh, that is there. And we have another instructor. I mean, another team is working with uh, uh, mainly with uh, what we call uh, Python programming because Python we can use in different applications, right? Uh, not okay. only with uh, machine learning. Uh, Python, there is a Python programming course as well, but that is irrelevant to our machine learning with Python. Okay, so it's like a three different courses. Uh, uh, for yeah, the three different courses. Yeah, especially with uh, which are related to AI and ML, machine learning. That's it. 
Okay, great. Thank because you. Because our team is our team is uh, more uh, highly qualified only with uh, machine learning. Because Kuldeep is uh, he did his PhD in machine learning uh, related right. to AI, and right. Praveen is also worked for uh, uh, Samsung scientist. He worked for NLP, natural, uh, and he worked for images with uh, uh, among about eight years. He worked for Samsung. And there is another instructor, Naresh. He worked for Samsung, and now he's working for BMW. With Anna. This, so our team is more uh, more into machine learning and AI. Okay. Uh, any other questions? So instructors, uh, like I know Kuldeep uh, uh, and yourself are here in uh, in Montreal. Montreal. Yeah. Uh, uh, is, uh, so the other teams, like other members, are uh, like in Germany, like uh, in different time zones. Yeah, but uh, no, the, but you know, these people will be connected to EST timing only. Our timings. Okay. Okay, gotcha. no problem. Yeah, because most of the people in uh, US and uh, Canada, I mean the team. Right. So the instructor's team. So yeah, so we connected to EST timing only. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, hi, this is Arvind. Actually, I have a question regarding to the Silver subject. Can you please go back to the slides uh, of the Silver's like uh, neural network and everything? Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, actually, I have a doubt regarding this. Like, uh, is it enough like one hour kind of lectures for every topic? Uh, because like I just did my machine learning like uh, as a basic thing in my previous semester. Uh, I don't think that uh, no, within uh, one hour. Yeah, Arvind. Uh, these are like uh, uh, I don't know, even I agree with you. Uh, only with uh, the classification techniques, you know, logistic regression mm -hmm. taking. The only with the logistic regression itself, it will go with a one lecture, because you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, it just you know we roughly uh, uh, put the timings one hour or thirty minutes, but uh, in reality, mm -hmm. uh, it takes little more. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, 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 yeah. even even SVM logistic regression, random forest, each each one technique, uh, once again followed by the application in Python with the libraries. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are just for uh, giving an idea. Okay, and at the same time, I have another question is like, uh, uh, how much you will focus on the Python programming clip? Because like, uh, I just know I have not gone through the, any programming in my previous semester. I just go through the basics like about the clustering part and coming to the decision trees, how the, uh, how you, you can uh, classify a tree and how you can cut up that is uh, pruning and everything. But I have not gone through any programming. And how well you focus the uh, Python programming on this particular section, like within one hour or something like that, you would put up at the time you mentioned. Yeah, so uh, in the particular, you know, uh, in the lecture or with, the, with mm -hmm. respect to imagine supervised learning. So mm -hmm. if we take like today's supervised learning, if it is being covered, mm -hmm. then tomorrow, mm -hmm. because you know, mm -hmm. uh, in Python, especially with machine learning, every day we don't write new programming. So any mm -hmm. project, if you take n number of projects, almost 50 to 60% of the programming is in the same programming, it will transfer, just copy paste. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like uh, like importing the libraries and uh, data processing, everything is same, same techniques, right? So yeah. our intention is at, at the end of, by the end of the course, you will, I mean, by yourself, you will handle with the Python, with the data, that's it. Yeah. What you can suggest for the uh, beginners like me, like I don't know anything about Python, uh, to be frank, like yeah. I just know the word, that's it, that's it. Uh, even I don't know how to program over there. And even I don't know about the, like, I, I can just handle about Java, but not the Python. How you yeah. can suggest for me, like, is it okay to go with this course? Okay, if you know Java, I don't think so. That the Python would be a big deal uh, because you know I have done my PhD. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, even I'm not. Uh, my background is not with uh, computer science, IT. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have done my masters mm -hmm. in AI, artificial intelligence. Okay, my applications mm -hmm. in transportation and artificial intelligence. So okay. it won't be a big deal, you know, non-technical or technical person with uh, with uh, handling the Python. Uh, and we do will will give will try to give you from basics onwards the Python especially, like uh, from starting we'll try to uh, give you a basics of Python, then followed by we'll try to give you a basic structures preparing the how to how to form the structure, then uh, the libraries and all you know it's 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 just importing the library we don't write the uh, extensive programming uh, on the Python especially for machine learning and data science. Okay.
Yeah. And actually, like, uh, do you discuss the problems that which you gave us like a task to do something like that? Because like, uh, uh, you don't mind. Uh, I'm saying like this. Like, I just uh, uh, attended some kind of webinars previously about the machine learning. The yeah. problems that which they are discussed are like when we are uh, listening their problems that they, that seems to be very easy. But coming to the task when we are doing something, then it is like uh, uh, we don't know like uh, what, from where to start and what to do. Uh, so, like, uh, do you discuss about the task uh, the pitch you gave, like, uh, as a ta like to do in like a homework or something like that? Yeah, I, I'll give you a just example. I think Harish was there on the earlier classes in another batch. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, if you if you if we go with the what we call quiz, the quiz is just five to ten questions, right? So, mm -hmm. but sometimes only to uh, only with the quiz itself, the class is going to be end because each and every question has to be understand, right? So the instructor is there to make you understand why it is, there are four options, why not others? Yes. The question is, answer is A, but why not B, C, D? So the instructor was there. So we don't just let you go with the answers. We'll make you understand why does what happen, especially with that. So even with the data, because that's the, that's there. Even even CN asked us like, uh, how long does the course? But usually we we prepare because we are not going only with like a commercial commercial point of view. But we are trying to make you understand everything, right? So even if, if the Kuldeep is not available for the particular class, the other instructor will uh, take the uh, will take the class and uh, make you understand that. So uh, we have like. Uh, uh, mix of uh, technology, uh, mix of like uh, domains here. Yeah. Kuldeep is specialized in healthcare sector, and uh, what we call the the Praveen is uh, specialized in finance and uh, images, and uh, uh, what we call Naresh is specialized in transportation, self-driving, and banking sector. Right. So mm -hmm. if one person is, uh, if you want to be more clarity on that, so the other instructor will take you in personal sessions as well. So we don't we don't just let you with the answers. We'll try to make you understand. Yeah, Gandhi, I want I want I want to share my experience. Uh, uh, so on the on the other batch. So that's true. Like uh, it's really like more focused on the hands-on. It jo it just not on just like a theoretical part, but actually like really on the hands-on. Uh, so we. Uh, like they mentioned in the uh, in the slides that it's gonna be in one hour, but uh, it's not. But it's not going to be complete in one hour. So maybe the explanation is going to be in one hour, but the hands-on and the real time. So with the real time examples, it's going to take some more time. Uh, and also like from our like student perspective, and and we also need to put some more time, um, not only on the class timings, but maybe like per week. Uh, two to three hours are are four to five hours per week. So if you put that effort, so so that's very much easy for us uh, because so right now like I'm in that situation. Uh, I'm also like I was I I was scared like I also don't know Python. I will, I have like maybe ten or twenty percent of programming language and I don't know Java too. Java is too much difficult. <laughs> I think <laughs> rather than <laughs> Python. <laughs> exactly like. It's like Java has more complex structure than Python. Python is just like you're talking to another person, just like mm -hmm. the English. Uh, I I understood that, uh, I, and even now, like I'm not uh, I'm not experienced in Python. I just know the basics of Python, but actually I I can write uh, some data processing techniques. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say that uh, especially uh, that's thanks to the Praveen. So actually he. He's my instructor. So what's the timing, Harish, uh, for the one that you're following there, uh, the, the, the other session that... Um, uh, the, the other batch is like a bit Wednesday because the other people in Toronto who is working for in cloud computing, those people are. So okay. we just, uh, because even Praveen is also uh, happy to take the weekdays classes. So okay. and those class, yeah, that batch is about to end like the next uh, couple of weeks. I think one two weeks. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 a, it's a by end actually. Now they are in uh, close to the project. Uh, okay. So, so are you yeah. planning to start another session from Wednesday then? Yeah, actually the Kuldeep and uh, the Praveen will be taking care of the new batch. So 
So that's why actually we are we don't want to be make the 10, 20 people in the group. So we just right. want two, two, three, or max five if we can, because otherwise the instructor cannot concentrate on the candidate or the student. Because the student, especially, it seems like for machine learning, the people think that it's very tough task. And the people no, think exactly. it's more related totally, to totally agree. Yeah, it's yeah, it's more related to mathematics. They need a lot of mathematical programming in, and ma they need PhD in mathematics. But in reality, it's not. So that's why uh, even the Kuldeep and Praveen, uh, they are very, uh, you know, I, I could say if you can meet them for coffee or somewhere, they are available in Montreal. You will understand how patient these guys are. Okay. okay. Uh, sure. uh, uh, yeah, we would like to meet uh, once. Uh, maybe we we'll, can go for a coffee. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, we all are can catch up here uh, somewhere because you know, on parallel that we have another uh, ba the team of persons working for uh, getting projects with government of Canada for uh, what we call uh, in consulting part. Okay. Okay. Even even Kuldeep is the part of Livia Group. Uh, uh, Kuldeep, can you explain about Livia? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like, uh, so the uh, we have like a laboratory for AI and image processing, which is like in Libya. So it was like part of one of the leading labs in artificial intelligence in Montreal. It's uh, University de Quebec. So for example, if you search for uh, the Canadian AI ecosystem for the previous two years, so in Montreal, it's like Mila is there, the Gerard lab is there, then the Livia, which is like from the where we did, uh, from where I did my PhD. So the, those are like the part of the labs which are like contributing to the AI research in Montreal. So that's like one of the things. Right. Are you getting fund? Like, I mean, I know there is in federal government, there is fund uh, uh, National Research Council, NRC, or something that they fund these uh, new initiatives, right? Yes. Uh, Go yeah, please. So actually like that's more like with the lab. So that's at the level of the professor. So we have like the a chair in AI for um, our lab like and then the chair in AI for medical imaging. So artificial intelligence in medical image analysis and then then there are two general chairs which are like on uh, AI in artificial intelligence and all. So yeah, they, that's like the part of the lab is there. Uh, so that's like uh, one aspect. Okay, got you. Even, even, so even as you, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll just add one point to Kuldeep's like, so yes, you're right, Sian, the government is supporting here in Mont Quebec, have in Canada. So if you can fund like 50%, the government will be uh, shared the other another 50% for your projects. So oh, okay. even if you see now, actually the Montreal is becoming world's AI hub. Oh, good yeah. to hear. So that is, yeah, that is there. So because even the lot of people, even the professors are the types of AI are located in Montreal. That's the, that is the main point for us. And that is very big, big asset for us in being in Montreal. Right, right, sure, yeah. So the, the other class on the, uh, the math, uh, the mathematical ML, uh, is it something that also useful uh, after this course? Uh, is it useful to take? So that is for, uh, uh, because in our board of directors, there is a, a Gurpreet Singh. He's a, he's a director, senior director for Cognigent. Uh, okay. So he's working for senior director, artificial intelligence uh, in Cognigent company. So he suggested us because we give uh, lectures for companies, organizations like, so he suggested to start because I don't think so right now we require the mathematics in artificial intelligence. That is more related to uh, what we call research point of view. You know, if you're already in machine learning, if you're already in data science, I mean, uh, both are almost the same. So if you're already there, then you could, you could, Maybe if you are in a project manager or somewhere in the higher levels, then you will need that just to just to insight. But it's uh, more of a cal advanced calculus kind of. Yeah, but not calculus, you know. But at this stage, we don't require those lectures. But those lectures are more for professionals, you know. Those those oh, exactly. those courses are for professionals. But you know, to start our career in AI or DS, data science, it's this is that's what our focus. Once if you are getting, maybe you will see next couple of years how big the change. Now that the research is going on, even in the internships as well, going on with the human resources, you know, the human resource, 
uh, I, I'm pretty sure by 2022, there is no more HRs available. Okay. So they are going to be replaced with uh, machine learning. So in oh. every organization, and uh, there are there are some technologies is going to be uh, I mean the fade out. So you're saying data centers will be replaced by the the ML. The data scientists are machine learnings, machine learners, you know, machine learning engineers. So these oh, people okay. are replaced by uh, yeah replaced by some of the human. Uh, I mean the the people HRs, you know, imagine these people uh, sit in front of the computers throughout the day and shortlist the candidates, right? But oh, now, okay. yeah, now the program, now the machine learning is going to be replace them. Okay, so like that, right. there are yeah, there are different sectors. I think by next uh, uh, five ten years, you will see like uh, only the data science and machine learning can lead the industry. I see. Okay, so there will be more automated than the manual. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's where. And you know, even Kuldeep was spent like almost eight years in uh, machine learning, right? And yeah, yeah. Uh, even yeah, and even Pradeep or you know, Praveen is also almost nine to ten years, and Narish is nine to ten is only in machine learning. And these people are not like with a different sector, a different stream to the machine learning. They st from starting itself, it, the, from starting it was they are into the machine learning and AI. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So um, yeah. our next batch, actually, you know, uh, I'll I'll. Even me or some of my team will be contact you. So whenever the next batch, we are planning for that. So probably uh, in this month, maybe in next next couple of weeks, we will start the batch. Yeah. All right. Oh, actually, I have a question, uh, Gandhi. Like, uh, yes, uh, can you please explain me uh, like uh, somewhat like brief about the project that which you are go uh, saying at the end of the course? Yeah, actually, we are uh, we are interested, you know, based upon the candidate. If the candidate is want to be, uh, you know, want to be into finance sector, we'll take mm -hmm. the financial project because we have a couple of projects with us already. So because the only thing is based on the candidate's interest, right? The student is interested in uh, finance because in Canada we have mainly two to three sectors leading Canada, right? One is finance, mm -hmm. another one is telecommunication, the another one is insurance, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, are there any uh, like instructors uh, from Germany, like uh, who are operating from Germany? Yeah, uh, Naresh Adepu, he is a senior tech lead for that uh, KPIT and okay. BMW. Yeah. Okay, currently he's in Germany, right? Yeah, currently like, he's in uh, Germany. Oh, fine. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, he's on site. Yeah. Okay. And I want so, to share my experience, uh, Gandhi, here uh, to Arvind yeah, on, on the project. So that uh, so that I'm actually working. Uh, so the one guy is. Uh, uh, so the one I got is for the finance, like uh, is the same example as like which kind of credit card it's suitable for a certain person. It's like a personalized mm -hmm. credit card. So what kind of deals uh, that a person might like? So based on that, that kind of credit card is going to be assigned to a particular. Uh, customer of yeah. the bank yeah. it's going yeah. like a personalized credit card it's like how mm -hmm. uh, it's like how we are getting uh, 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 the interest products uh, on the Amazon when we open is the same as mm -hmm. like that like uh, at the personalized credit cards in the finance so on that it's problem, like I'm, like, I'm working on now yeah. but actually yeah. Uh, uh, yeah it's a big one but we need a data set and we need to process that uh in that problem actually so we were working on it mm -hmm. so why because you know if you see like the re recent startups in montreal especially in finance and uh, transport so flings there is one company called flings which is located uh, at uh, central bell so these people working for uh, national bank and uh, bmo so these people only specialized in finance sector especially for with machine learning and data science what do they do? They they they, say they they try to find the fraud detection in the credit card and banking, and that is that is one of the one of the I mean good startup recent times. It started in three four years back, but it's really picked up very well. So so what I'm my conclusion is like you know irrespective of the sector, if you know the application, it's easy to work on any kind of sectors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is called is Plinks uh, Gandhi? 
Yeah, flings. F L I N K S. Flings. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So these people actually, the group of people started that. Now, now it's really good. You know, uh, they're just working only with uh, finance. So that's where you know, in Canada, if you see, uh, even with uh, what we call uh, the the rental cars, for rental cars also recently we we got one request for. Uh, rental cars uh, uh, mission learning engineer for that particular domain just to see the because a lot of people claim that insurance is right so after taking the cars and uh, they need to be they need to be see the demand of that cars during during uh, peak hours and if you see like uh, stm or uh, uh, the big sick big sick bicycles so all these people comes under uh, comes under transportation sector even cn bombardier uh or uh, the aeroplanes i mean so these these sectors so these people are requesting for machine learning engineers right now so all they need is how to implement the the what we call the, the algorithms or models Uh, we can, and we can a final question. Uh, yeah, please, Ellen. Yeah, and and a final question from me. Like, uh, uh, what what you can say? Like, uh, after completion of these course, uh, where we can stand? Like, uh, as a basic, uh, uh, in the uh, basic level or else in the intermediate level, where we can stand? Like, after completion of these course, you can you can uh, you can really start a career. Actually, uh, that's that's mm -hmm. our intention, right? You can really start a career uh, with uh, machine learning engineer because. Uh, in this in this process in the course of in this process of the course uh, you will you will try to understand handling the data because these people are real time experienced people because Praveen also work as a team lead uh, mm -hmm. some of the companies in Samsung Senecron and now we are dealing with some of the private projects so uh, you are going to be monitored by the team leads and project managers right so you are not dealing you are not going to be monitored by the academic guy that's yeah. what so so at the, by the end of the course you can you can handle the project mm -hmm. may not be like the project manager level because you need to know the process of the project so but yes you can start your career with uh, with as a machine learning engineer or data science Because uh, maybe you might be confused, like the difference between data. I just want to give you a brief interact, brief exam, uh, um, a brief explanation on that. Uh, so data science and machine learning is just a you know like a, like a siblings. So even in machine learning, uh, Kuldeep, can you go to the next slide? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, the next one. Yeah, here. If you see no, uh, if you see that the data processing. Data preparation, data preprocessing, feature engineering. Uh, so this is nothing but a data science. Okay. okay. So the the bagging, boosting, cross validation. Usually the data scientists do uh, this particular data processing uh, the course. Only mm -hmm. this, and okay. he will he will try to understand the, some of the machine learning techniques. What do they do? Usually the data scientist before that there is a people called data analysis like data business intelligence and data analyst. Those people try to make understand try to process the data and they will give to data scientist. Then the data scientist will see try to find the insights of the data and he will give to machine learning engineer ML engineer. Okay. okay? So okay. Uh, now here as a uh, ML in this course. What we do, we'll try to make you understand how to deal with the data, how to process the data, how to take the insight of the data, right? So with that data, you will try to make the models in machine learning. Okay. So this is typically happen in the industry. They can the machine learning engineer can do everything, but the industry they do, don't allow them. The industry make them do BI business intelligence people or data analysts to take the data collect the data and they will transfer to the uh, data scientists. It's not nothing, uh, we no need to be called as the scientist, but the industry uh, give that logo like data scientist. The, the, the data scientist can take care of the data processing, just like a cooking, you know. Before coming to mm -hmm. the chef, there are a uh, lot of people, like one person going to marketing, right? So they will get yes. the market, uh, they will grab the material and the other person mm -hmm. shopping the, shopping these vegetables, all this stuff. And the chef, finally, the chef going to be cooked that uh, cooked that cuisine, right? 
So that's yeah. the same thing applicable here. The who will going to be do the market and get uh, grab the material from the from the uh, metro or uh, some of the uh, like Provigo. So those are data analysts, data collectors. Okay, and who will chopping the table, chopping the vegetables, and who will preparing the uh, the the stuff is called data scientist. And the chef here called is that machine learning engineer. That's okay. I hope you understand. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. any questions uh th thank you thank you gandhi so, so it was th thanks kuldeep and the team uh, gandhi everyone uh, for the for this uh, introductory uh... yeah we can catch up somewhere uh, for a coffee sometime sure. uh, but, yeah actually um uh, harish myself and uh priyanka also like uh, at cn uh, and i mean as well so yeah, even i think kuldeep also working close to cn uh, uh, yeah. Yes, but sorry, so, I'm not in Canada right now, like I'm in Germany. <laughs> Maybe oh, so that's okay. the reason why I'm asking you, is there any instructor from Germany? Yeah, but uh, he's working for this batch, I mean, I don't know you are in Germany, sorry. <laughs> yeah, but it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, so yeah, so you will you will be in uh, Canadian time zones. But if you need, I can ask, uh, I can request Naresh to taking care of you because you know, uh, but uh, if you are if you are with uh, two to three people in a group, so you will understand the different prospects, right? Because CN will have different uh, idea on the approach. So you will see, and you can work together as a team. Yes. So so that will that will help for you. But yeah. So see, uh, Arvind, uh, did you leave your uh, email ID and the phone number so that uh, I will ask Naresh will contact? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, I mean, in the chat. In the chat or in your, uh, in your email also, I think you might get our email, right? Yes, yes, I can reply to that. Right? Yes. Yeah, sure, so sure. just leave your contact. So I will ask Naresh, will Naresh to contact you. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I will. Okay. So CN, thank you, CN. Uh, thank you, Arvind. Thank you, Hari. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. It was really nice. Yeah, see you. Yeah. 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 Enjoy your weekend. Bye bye. Yeah. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Will they?